This is a simple model of what you will find on many rear wheel drive vehicles. A single source of power applies torque to this contraption over here called a differential. The differential splits that power between the two rear wheels for propulsion. What is unique about this design is that inside the differential there are only two moving parts and instead of using mechanical gears it only has two rotating magnet arrays. Just like its mechanical counterpart, this differential allows the wheels to turn relative to each other, allowing the vehicle to maneuver around corners without dragging the wheels. Another feature of differentials is that it splits the torque from the motor in a fixed portion between the two wheels. That's why if one wheel loses traction, the torque going to the other wheel also disappears. But the minute I apply resistance to the free spinning wheel, the wheel with traction again receives its portion of the torque. And just like other magnetic gears, if there's too much torque, the gear just slips. Well, it looks like it's doing everything you'd expect from a differential. So I'm going to take it apart to show you the insides and then also tell you why it's still not doing exactly what I want it to do. But before I do that, there's another interesting idea I want to share with you. If you add rings of magnets around the outside of this differential, what you do is apply a braking force to the internal array. And what that does is give you the same effect as limited slip on a mechanical diff. And by making these rings adjustable side to side, you could even adjust the amount of slip required for given driving conditions. If this tooth belt was mounted on the side and these rings were able to move right to the center, you can effectively create a proper diff lock. And this is it, the only two moving parts inside this differential. Two magnetic gears mounted on a short shaft just to make sure they are aligned. And this is of course not all there is to a magnetic gear. You also need a way to couple the flux from one side to the other side. And that is where the housing comes in. Inside the housing are iron pins. I just use nails in this case. The nails overlap from one gear to the other. And that is what gives you your torque coupling from one gear to the next. Just for comparison, this is a mechanical differential from a remote control car. Power is fed to the crown gear and these are the two output shafts. Now if you treat this as a planetary gear, hold the gear housing fixed, all you really have is a one-to-one -one ratio with change in direction. I can remove the crown gear. Now you can see the side gears. Each of the output shafts have a mounted side gear. Now in terms of a planetary gear system, the two side gears would be equivalent to equal sized sun and ring gears, while your spider gears are effectively the planets and the housing is your planet carrier. And since the sun gear and the ring gear is the same size, the ratio will be one to one and all you end up with is a change in direction. Since these two side gears are the same size, the torque division between the two shafts is an even 50-50 split and that is something that my magnetic gear does not achieve. In a magnetic gear, the actual size of the gear does not matter. What matters is the number of magnets on each gear. This gear has 26 magnets, this side only 24. So the ratio is 13 to 12. In other words, in percentage terms, 52 and 48. And that is also the ratio in which the torque is split, so we don't get even torque split. To achieve the change in direction, I'm employing this as a second order magnetic gear. In other words, 13 pole pairs plus 12 pole pairs gives me 25. And that is the number of iron pins distributed in the modulator ring. Now since this is 25, 26, 24, you never find that all the iron pins simultaneously align with all the magnets on any of these gears. There will always be some pins that are better aligned than others. And that is what gives you your redistribution of the magnetic field from one gear to the next. That is what allows the change in direction. 
if I therefore want a one to one ratio between these two gears they must have the same number of magnets and if you calculate the number of bolt pieces required you'll find that the number of bolt pieces is equal to the number of magnets on each gear and that is what I built over here just a small axial model each has 10 magnets and the modulator in the model has 10 pole pieces and you very quickly find that this does not work it's supposed to give me a change in direction but all it does is lock up and that is because every magnet on one gear is coupled via a pole piece to another magnet on the other side not allowing any distribution of the field it simply loops forming between opposite pairs and giving you a super strong flux coupling not changing the direction at all so far I've tried a number of different variations on this trying to see if I can get it to work I've changed the position of the magnets putting them at an angle I've tried different size modulator pieces slanting those at an angle still nothing it's no proof that this isn't doable but I haven't found a solution yet all is not lost though for the fractional ratios take this simple 3 to 2 ratio with 12 magnets 8 magnets and 10 pole pieces if the modulator is fixed then this is a simple actual gear with a ratio of 3 to 2 if the modulator becomes a driven input then you end up with a torque split of 40 and 60 percent so this could still be applicable in vehicles where a center differential is applied and you want a different torque going to the rear wheels compared to the front wheels. In theory, if this gear had a 2 to 1 ratio but the modulator pieces were arranged such that you don't get reversal between the pinion and the ring gear in other words, instead of adding the number of pole pieces to get the modulator count you subtract the amount of pole pieces on the pinion from those on the ring gear that will give you a change in direction between the pinion and the modulator and the ratio would be one to one so you could in theory get your 50-50 torque split but you end up with so few modulator pieces that there are magnets exposed directly from one gear to the next and the result is very inconsistent, very snatchy, lots of torque ripple so once again unfortunately not practical and that's it for the differential magnetic gears. See you again next time.